Hey guys, my name is Fabe and welcome back to another episode on the Time Shot server. There are the slimes. And you can see not much has been done since last episode. Well, at least not much that I can show you guys quite yet. I worked on something else on another small little side project here on the Time Shot server. And uh, I can't reveal it quite yet. You guys will see. You guys will see in probably one of the next episodes. Anyways, today we are gonna dig on camera. We're gonna dig and we're gonna talk about stuff. <laughs> because I like stuff and I feel like like talking about a bunch of stuff. So I hope you don't mind. Fair warning. And I maybe... Nah, I'm not gonna say anything. We're just gonna talk and uh, listen to some slimes. Isn't that awesome? Everyone loves listening to slimes, right? Maybe not. Um... Okay, we're gonna dig and place glass at the same time. But yeah, in case you have missed it, on Saturday was the Godiva Gaming Christmas Charity UHC that I already mentioned in the last Time Shot episode. And I had a blast! It was amazing! I was part of Team uh, Sugar Plum, or well, not part of him, but I was commentator for Team Sugar Plum, which consisted out of uh, some awesome ladies in Nasia, which is of course part of the Time Shot server, and uh, Honey Play, or Honey Plays, depending where you're looking her up, I think. Um, she is awesome too. She is uh, one of the commentators for RMCT, for example, but also YouTuber and uh, mainly streamer. And uh, Ashley Marie, which is also uh, a big YouTuber and streamer, I think. So we, I had a good team and I had a lot of fun because you guys know how much I love UHCs. I love commentating it and it turned out amazing. It was for, for charity, as I mentioned last time. And we raised, in total, all teams combined, over $2,500 for the Bombay Teen Challenge. Which was, it's just an amazing number. Can you imagine, we streamed for maybe three, three and a half hours and we raised over two and a half thousand dollars. I'm so impressed by all the viewers, hopefully some of you. <laughs> it was just amazing. So much money raised and everyone had just such a blast. There were a few issues, but <laughs> I think everyone is used to that by now when it comes to UHC. I mean, there's always some sort of issue, right? Uh, but we still, we all had a lot of fun. It was really, really cool. It was my first experience as kind of a commentator. And, uh, I hope I did a good job. I don't know, you guys might be the judge of that. Um, I can only tell you guys that I really, really enjoyed it. And that I would love to do it again sometime. It is a whole different story when you're playing a UHC. Or when you are watching one in spectator mode. First of all, um, I gotta say, that's the first time I could really use spectator mode, since it was implemented in Minecraft 1.8. And it is really, really, really good. It is really well done. There are a few things that could use some improvement, but overall, I think it worked really, really well. Um, the player highlighting helped out a lot, and um, the only thing that I would probably improve is visibility of inventory, so you can actually take a look into the player's inventory, so that would be really helpful, especially for commentating, of course. Um, but yeah, I had, a, I had a blast, it was really, really cool, uh, flying around, seeing possible... Uh, oh crap, how's Sue doing? Uh, not too good. Okay, that should be fixed fairly soon. And it was really, really nice, seeing possible... Um, what what is the what is it what is it called? Crap 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 crap! Come on, Fape! Move your brain! You need to this word right now. Not collisions, but <sighs> moments when teams meet. There's a word for that. I can't come. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and if you actually see that while flying through the world, it is so much more tense because you can't really predict how teams are gonna react, which teams are who. And um, this spectator mode combined with the, the team speak that Graf set up for all of us. We had just a giant uh, team speak. Well, I don't know how giant the server was, but we had tons of different rooms. And every team had their own room. The commentators had their own room. The commentators had a common room. And then there was a room for dead players and everything. It was just so incredibly helpful. We could jump around to different calls like it's nothing and listen in on our team 
uh, get some insight. I really, really enjoyed that part of it just as much. So, I don't know. Overall, I gotta say, the ladies did a really, really awesome job. Audio Modified uh, was one of the main organizers who took care of the map and the redstone. Uh, the command box, I should say. And... Uh, um, the plugin for the donations and everything seemed to work pretty well. Just a few minor glitches <laughs> What well, is one moment? i maybe you saw it if you follow me on Twitter You probably saw the the gif and uh, the picture I tweeted out uh, <laughs> There was one moment where uh, we noticed that the world border wasn't really moving in so audio tried to fix it manually I think and uh, What happened is the world border just jumped in immediately and pretty much all the teams died at once <laughs> and the reactions of all the streamers that were streaming at that time was pretty much the same it was so funny seeing all the faces at the same moment after the UHC we collected for like a few hours we collected all the different point of views all the different faces in the in the Skype chat and I uh, compared them <laughs> it was so funny so uh, go to Twitter if you haven't seen it um, should have tweeted it out and probably a lot of the other guys tweeted it out as well. You go up there, you have nothing to do down here. You hear me? Get out of here! Well, they can still fight against the current. Oh well, once this is all closed off they shouldn't have a chance. Um, what I'm basically doing here is I'm gonna have one glass wall here and one glass wall up in the front. And then having... And I'm gonna remove all the stone in between I think. That's the plan that I have right now. But yeah, it was a huge success, I think, and everyone said that, so I was, I was, it was just so awesome to be part of that. Um, I really gotta thank Inasia for um, coming, coming up to me and asking me to be their commentator. I, oh man, it was amazing. I had a blast. Alright. Moving on. What else have I been up to in the last couple of days slash week uh, in my life? And uh, now we come back to stuff because I love stuff. What I've been doing is I've been watching a Sword Art Online. If you don't know what it is, it is an anime. Uh, a quite new one, I think. It's a year old, I believe. I'm not quite positive on that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. Uh, I don't know all the the infos about it. But I want to talk a little bit about that because I seriously fell in love with this anime and the world it plays in uh, within the last couple of, couple of days and weeks and I don't know it's just it's definitely up there in my mind right now at least with uh, animes like Code Gears and Death Note which were my favorite animes before but Sword Art Online is just amazing okay I'm gonna I'm gonna spoiler a little bit here so in case you haven't watched it and you still want to watch it sometime, which I can highly recommend, um, and you mind spoilers, you might want to tune out for for a bit. But if you already watched it or if you maybe don't even care about anime at all, um, stay here and listen to me a little bit. Maybe I can convince you that this is really... Uh, I can't make this jump, can I? How am I going to get out of here? Uh, maybe... And I, ooh, not quite. It has to be possible, right? Nope. Maybe like this. Come on, I know I can do this. Can do this! Ooh, oh yes, I can. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just ever since I've been um, very little, so I can ba I can barely remember it. I my parents used to tell me that all the time. Whenever I watched a movie with my parents, and uh, every single time I basically began to cry uh, during the credits. It's what my parents told me, I don't quite remember that time of my life. Um, but apparently I got so immersed into the stories and into the world of the movies that uh, I really had always a hard time... Um, Coming back to the real world, I guess. <laughs> and I think I st th this is something that I still experience nowadays quite a bit, actually. Uh, whenever I read a book or watch a show and it ends, it really, really ends, I'm always a little sad that I get um, pulled out of this world again that I immerse so, so much into and that I 
put all my heart and soul into. And <laughs> I don't know if that's a good property or a bad property to have, but I'm definitely one of these guys. A story would have to be really, really bad for me to get not immersed in it. But once, especially books, I think it's uh, even more the case than it would be in, in shows and movies. Well, I guess I gotta distinguish those two, um, two because it is a different if we watch a movie or if you watch um, a movie series or even um, a TV show. Because you don't get that immersed in a movie. It's just not that long. You put, don't put that much time into it. And um, also the characters are not that well formed usually. In a movie there's just not, a time, not enough time to immerse you uh, well enough, I think. So I actually, if you would ask me, I think I would prefer TV shows over movies. Just because there's more of it. <laughs> and this is also... Um, I had a discussion with some people in the past when um, when the, the directors or whoever decides that when a book gets put into a movie, like for example Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings or the Twilight Saga or whatever you wanna, or the Hunger Games for example, all these all these are examples where the last book or for the, uh, the Hobbit for example is also a good example where one book is put into several movies and a lot of people are always complaining oh these guys are just after their money they just want to make more movies so people are gonna pay more money to see them for the same story and I have to totally disagree I love when one book uh, comes out in more than one movie because that means there's more of it to watch and uh, this is something that I always prefer when it comes to stuff like that. I don't know, I might I might be uh, in a minority there, but I, I really do love when there's a lot of uh, one, one world to watch and get immersed in. And that's what happens right now to me with Sword Art Online. So I started watching um, the first season. It's, I think it's like 25 episodes of Sword Art Online. And uh, then I didn't want to let go of the world. I wasn't I wasn't done with the world. I got so immersed into it that I didn't want to stop uh, watching and um, hence I searched a little bit. And there is already a, a second season apparently. However, um, it's only in Japanese so far and I, I don't know. That's also um, a point of discussion for many people. I am not someone who watches anime in, in Japanese. I usually watch it dubbed in English because I just don't want to read the, the subtitles all the time. It's, I don't know, that that is totally against my immersion, for example. If I have to read all the time the subtitles while watching it, um, I'm, I'm, I'm losing a lot of the immersion that I would normally get. So I usually wait for the dubbed versions. But uh, I, so I didn't watch the second season yet, but instead I found out that there are actually um, light novels that uh, the anime is based on. So I started reading those and on a single day on, wait, are these signs already destroyed? They are, aren't they? On a single day on Friday, on Friday I think, I read over 300 pages of the, the first Sword Art Online novel, basically. <laughs> That's how how addicted I got to it. I just couldn't stop reading it. Oh, man. But yeah, what I what I think, and now it comes actually to the... Right now it was more about me, but now I want to talk a little bit about Sword Art Online, Sword Art Online itself. It's... I think the thing that most fascinated me about it is the, the virtual reality um, MMORPGs. If this would be really, really, really possible, this would be amazing. I would be, I would probably get lost in a world like that. Just because of my weakness for good immersion. And um, I gotta backtrack a little bit again um, to how I feel about games. I never got, come on, I can make this jump. I never got as immersed in a game as I got immersed into a TV show or a movie. And I don't know why that is, because a lot of people, I think, get more immersed into into games because they can actually control their characters and um, in some games even 
um, change the story to their behavior and that's of course awesome. But for some reason it never really felt immersive to me when I played a game, even in an RPG or anything like that. It always was still a game and I always was still sitting in front of my PC instead of, um, I don't know, diving into the full story like that. And it might be different for some people, but for me it was always the case. But I think this kind of virtual reality could really change that. And oh man, it is, it is just simply amazing. If you can imagine to live in a world like that, <laughs> I would immediately get sucked into it. I, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, <clears throat> so for those of you who haven't watched it, uh, the virtual reality they have basically, they have something called a nerf gear, which is uh, pretty much just a helmet. And uh, in the story, it says that this nerf gear can actually um, influence your, mag through magnetic, electromagnetic pulses, your brain functions. And hence simulate all the different movements and um, all the thoughts and tastes and smells that you normally would get from your hands, eyes and ears, um, you're experiencing them just from electromagnetic wave that get into your head by this helmet. This is weird. Why is this messed up? And if that would be really possible, that would be amazing. And at the same time, um, probably an even, even, even more awesome part of it is that you can, all the movements that you want to do with your body, gets actually intercepted by this helmet, so you don't, you can't move your body while you're in this state. Why is this? Oh, because, of, okay, never mind, it's not a, a source block, it's just because this dirt block is right there. Doesn't matter. Let's get rid of it, actually. Um, so all the signals that you send to your body get intercepted and instead translated into the game, so you can't really move your body while you're in that, and that is, is I think, something that is really important for um, virtual reality, because right now, um, right now, it is possible to completely uh, get your eyes more or less into a virtual reality with something like the Oculus Rift. I don't know, I never actually won Oculus Rift, I would love to try it out to see how good it really is, but it seems to be pretty accurate. Of course, the graphics still have their limits, but this is only a matter of time till we get processors that can actually handle this kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I guess the, the vision is already something that can be put into virtual reality pretty well. But however, something like smell or uh, even... Um, what is it called? What is the, the sense called that is basically touching? I don't quite remember right now. Anyways, it's gonna be hard to simulate something like that. And um, another another important step is to develop something that doesn't require just a large room. Because even if you could control your in-game persona with your thoughts, at the same time you would also control your own body still, if the signal isn't intercepted, like for example it isn't sorted out online. So the problem is that you would just run around and uh, run against obstacles in the real world when you're trying to move in game. And this is something that is gonna be a huge difficulty to overcome. I'm talking about reality right now because I think, I believe that this could be possible in a few decades, maybe. And it's, it's gonna be hard. I'm not gonna lie about that and it might not ever happen, but it could. Maybe. <laughs> um, in the, the Sword Art Online uh, story plays in the year 2022. Um, so it's maybe, what is it? Eight years? Seven or eight years? And I don't think we'll have something like that uh, within the next seven or eight years. But maybe in 15 to 20 years, maybe it develops in this direction. It depends a lot on the science, of course, behind it. My Sue is almost done for. It's not good, but my hopes are up that I will uh, that we will achieve something similar at least within our li a lifetime. There is actually an, another movie. Uh, what was it called with Bruce Willis? Um, Sorrow Gates, I think, is it is called. 
Uh, and this is actually pretty much a similar concept because in this movie people are not controlling a game uh, with their thoughts. Instead they're controlling an, an android, a robot, um, which uh, goes through everyday life while the actual controller, in, for example Bruce Willis in the movie, just stays at home all the time and is safe from all kind of danger and uh, all kind of harm that could come to him in the real world. They just stay at home, lie in, lie in a, I don't know, I think it's a bed in the movie. And from there on control their, their robots that uh, live their everyday life for them. Which is also, I guess, possible once something like the nerf gear is there, because I don't think there's much of a difference to converting the, the signals from your brain into um, a game or into a robot. It's the, pre the same principle and given that we would have the technology to construct um, humanoid robots, I guess once we have the one we have the other two. And of course there, there are gonna come a lot of problems with these kind of technologies. If they should ever come to the real world, they are gonna be huge, huge difficulties because people would get lost in there and people would ruin their lives in these kind of technology. And I think that's something that has really to be figured out how how this should be handled. And I'm glad uh, this won't be my job because it's, it's gonna be really, really hard to regulate this kind of stuff because this gives just, I don't know if I would call it an addiction, but it is, it is just the way the world we are living in is far from perfect and it's most of the time not really um, something people want to live in. I don't know. There are probably a lot of people around. I'm not gonna... I don't know about... I don't know much about that. But I figure that a lot of people would be... Oh crap! Did I destroy it? No, I didn't. Ah, uh, it's there. Okay, let's, let's not use it again. Let's see how much it would cost to repair it. Probably too much though. Oh man. Do I, have my fi Do I have to fight my way through here now? It's dangerous. Yeah, there are gonna be a, there are gonna be a lot of problems with this technology if it should ever be the case. And I wonder how everything will be handled. But I still hope I will be still around when this kind of stuff happens. Because I would be a sucker for that stuff. <laughs> I would love it to bits and pieces. Like I even love the story about it right now. Oh man. Anyways, I'm really enjoying Sword Art Online, is basically what I'm saying. Uh, what I think is that the first world um, the enemy played in, called Einkrad, is a lot cooler than the second part of the, the first season, which played uh, in a different uh, MMORPG, basically. And the world in there was a lot more weird, and the anime itself got a little weird. So I personally prefer the first 14 episodes, which is just an amazing setting, an amazing story. And I believe they could have made so much more out of it. They skipped, if you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. They skipped so much, so many possible, oh, did I break my sword, really? They skipped so many possible stories um, by basically, uh, they had all these... Um, time frames that were completely skipped. It started out really awesome and it said, okay, one month later, this and this was the case. Then two months later, this and this was the case. Then two years later, this and this was the case. And um, then it also abruptly kind of stopped this, this arc of the story. And I was a little bit disappointed. I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I was really disappointed with the, the ending like that. I would have loved to see more details in this world. And more stories been told in this world than they actually were in the anime. Um, I heard from from what I've read online that people said that uh, the next books are gonna be uh, better again. So basically they are, I think someone told me there are... Did I just break them with my hand? Oh, stupid fape. <laughs> someone told me that there are already 15 Sword Art Online novels out and the first two played in this first world is the, which is basically the first 14 episodes of the anime and I think the second, uh, the third and the fourth book 
played uh, are the other 10 episodes of the... Do I have... Oh, I have enough diamonds, very nice. Let's see how much, how much it would cost. Um, the other 10 episodes basically play are the, the third and the fourth book. Unfortunately, the third and the fourth book haven't even been translated to English yet. They are also in Japanese, and since I don't know Japanese, I can't read them yet. I'm still in the middle of the second book, so I'm not too worried about it yet. But it's gonna be another huge disappointment. I hate to wait when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Too expensive. I guess we have to build a grave for Suda Third, because Suda Third is officially done for. Ha! <laughs> Do you see that? There's a little present uh, some friend left us here. We're gonna check that out in a future episode. Not yet, because I think we still have quite a bit of time till Christmas, and I'm pretty sure it has something to do with Christmas. So I'm gonna leave that here for a while as a teaser, and we are gonna open that up maybe next week. Maybe next week. We'll see. We'll see. Be, be excited about it. Uh, but yeah, I ramble on for quite a bit. Okay, Suda four, Suda third is dead, and it's time for Suda, Suda fourth, and this is just a normal pick. That's my fortune. That's Suda fourth, and I also need a sword. Get some iron going, since I have so much of it, and then we are good to go again. But yeah, guys, uh, <laughs> I didn't do much this episode. I basically just talked a lot and I hope you don't mind it too much. I just felt really like exchanging my feelings with you guys today because it really, it is all over my mind right now. I'm thinking about this world all the time and maybe, maybe you guys are as enthusiastic about it as I am. It would be cool. Um, so we can talk about it a little more. Leave your comments about what you think, of course, and... Maybe you have some other experience. What would you think? What would happen if something like virtual reality MMORPGs would become reality? I know even now in the normal MMORPGs, people are already getting addicted to them. But do you think this would be a huge problem when we finally would get to virtual reality? Or do you think people would be able to handle it and to, to control it and not to be controlled by it? I don't know, it's, it's a really, really hard question that society might have to answer uh, when we get to this point. But it's still years away. Anyways, guys, you see the idea here. I think I'm gonna finish off the rest of camera if I can. I'm gonna have to gather a lot more sand to get that stuff done, um, to gather all the glass. But uh, you get the idea. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this kind of a different episode than from what we normally do. And I hope to see you all again in the next episode on the Timeshot server. But until then, have a nice day. And seriously, guys, don't be daft. Play some Minecraft. <laughs>